Stop trade and not capital is seen as the most powerful way to transform an economy. Getting the right people with the right skills in the right place and at the right time has never been more urgent nor more complex. People are mobile, which we see in today's refugee crisis and also with the global talent war. That's why international mobility and talent attraction are the central themes in INSEAD's third annual Global Talent Competitiveness Index report. Here today to share the findings from this report are Bruno Lanvin, INSEAD's Executive Director of Global Indices, and Paul Evans, INSEAD's Emeritus Professor of Organizational Behavior. Bruno and Paul, welcome. Thank you. Hello. What do the top countries uh, in this year's ranking teach us about the key enablers of talent competitiveness? Well, at the very top uh, of the rankings this year, we have three small open economies. Uh, Switzerland, number one, Singapore, number two, and Luxembourg, number three. They are followed by the United States and then by a number of Nordic countries. Already that tells us that uh, a country that is small, more agile, more open, has a better chance to be talent competitive. If we look at the top 20, they are basically the same as we had last year. Only five out of those 20 are not European economies, which also tells us about the weight of history and geography in talent competitiveness. One can add that there are also some emerging talent magnets. You've got in Asia, you've got South Korea, you've got Indonesia, and don't let's forget about China. You've got in Latin America, uh, you've got Chile, and if we were to single out a country in Africa, it would be Rwanda. But, you know, you've got to think about the drivers of talent. And what we talked about last year remains as true as ever, or even more true. And that is that governments are becoming more and more aware of the importance of vocational education. They're becoming aware that we encouraged people 30 years ago, everybody, to go to university. And now these days, we've got generalist graduates and so forth who find it in many countries very difficult to find jobs. And then if you look at industry, industry faces this skills shortage in so many countries of the world. There just simply aren't enough people who've got the vocational education and training with the skills that industry needs. And so what does this imply for business then, these, these shortages? What we see is that uh, people have always moved to where jobs were. Now, more and more, we see jobs moving to where talent is. Uh, this is largely due to technology. Uh, we can think of the emergence of the service economy, but also uh, more uh, spectacularly now, Industry 4.0, distributed manufacturing, which allow to tap talent where it is. This is particularly true for the, the higher types of competences, the higher level of talents. And when we look at the scores of countries like China or Vietnam, we see that indeed their scores are improving significantly on the global knowledge skill pillar. So this pool of advanced higher level talent becomes something that can be outsourced globally. And that's one major change in terms of this relative mobility between jobs and people. People today are more and more mobile. Uh, for example, the Chinese and the Indians are going to the United States to study and on the other hand, INSEAD MBA students who come from all over the world are interested in working in a different country. Does that mean that some regions are going to see a, a brain gain and other regions are going to see a, a brain drain? If you take the innovative and entrepreneurial people uh, in North America, in Europe, there's a very high percentage of them who were born abroad, who've lived abroad, who've worked abroad. So kind of foreign experience goes hand in hand with being part of the talent pool, the creative part of the talent pool. And it's something that the young people today know. They want to move internationally. So, you know, international mobility is with us. But the other side of that is that mobility develops people, develops talent. So if you like, it's kind of circular. And these days, we don't think at the country level about brain drain and brain gain. We think in terms of brain circulation. It's circular. In this global talent war, what, what attracts uh, good people? I mean, certainly pay and lifestyle um, are, are important factors. And of course, people don't like to pay taxes. But what else is important to attract the best and the brightest? Yeah, what, what, what attracts people apart from pay and lifestyle? Well, in 
two words, it's management practices. And those professional management practices are attractive to talent. The GCCI evidence shows, picks out two in particular. One is paying attention to getting, as you said, the right people in the right places rather than your family and your friends. And the second thing is taking investment in employee development very, very seriously. Migration is currently a pressing issue, especially uh, in Europe, as you touched on earlier, Bruno. What does the GTCI report actually recommend that countries do to tackle the problems, but also maximize the opportunities from these increased migrant flows? Well, first, and we insist in that in this year's edition of the report, we must remember that migrants have played a significant role in creating some of the most successful and innovative businesses in the world. Uh, if we think of companies like Intel, uh, Google, YouTube, they were all founded by immigrants. If we look at uh, some of the most prominent uh, leaders and CEOs of large companies, many of them happen to have been born in the countries that are not the country that are, host the headquarters of these companies. Think of Carlos Ghosn or Vikram Pandit or George Soros, for example. The one thing that I would say is that we must not forget about the importance of skilled professional immigration. We need skilled professionals. And when you look at the economic arguments, they are crystal clear. It's the skilled professionals which drive growth. And I just remind you that, you know, among the Syrians, for example, there are many of them among the refugees who are indeed highly skilled professionals. There is indeed a tension that we have to manage much better than we do at the present time in most countries. You've got the privileged people who are part of the talent pool. Those are the people who are mobile and who profit from it there. But then you've got people lower down the social pyramid who lack opportunity uh, there, lack often the necessary skills uh, there. Along the lines of what Paul was just mentioning, we uh, cannot overestimate the uh, impact of technology on the future of jobs. Uh, and we don't talk there about just automation. Uh, we see an increasing number of so-called knowledge jobs which are being taken over by machines. Uh, and this affects the fundamental pillars of our economies and our economic systems. Uh, for instance, it affects the notion of property, the notion of contract, in ways that have not necessarily been anticipated. Some countries are preparing better than others to uh, confront this revolution. Uh, the goal uh, of a tool like uh, GTCI is to help further the understanding of what is at stake and anticipate what kind of skills and talents will be needed to address these challenges. Well, thank you for coming in and talking to us today on INSEAD Knowledge, Bruno and Paul. Thank you very much, Thank Sarah. you, Sarah. Thank you.